Instead of profit margins and budget reports, sports took the center stage at a corporate event today as 6,500 local employees took part in a day of play. Think of field day for adults. Employees representing 85 local companies were competing to help their respective employers be crowned one of four San Antonio Sports Corporate Cup champions. They were all going head to head in 15 different events, including tug of war, sack races and hula hoop challenges. It wasn't all fun and games, though. The day of play was held to benefit San Antonio sports youth programs. And there was a lot of sunshine out there, it looked like. Very humid as well. I'm sure that it was getting a little toasty, especially as they were wrapping things up. A look outside with live cam here shows that we still do have, yes, plenty of sunshine in place in San Antonio. We also have a few clouds out there as well. Now, we did have some strong storms move through portions of the area last night. We are not finished with the storm chances. In fact, a few more will be possible later on this evening and again through the overnight hours for some. And then after that, daily opportunities for at least some isolated showers and rumbles will be possible into next week and because of that temperature slightly below average. We'll get you a full look at all those details after the break. Some loud storms early this morning gave way to some beautiful Saturday weather. Yeah, those were really loud though. I feel like my husband didn't wake up from them and I thought something was wrong with him. That's surprising <laughs> That's because crazy. a lot of folks and pets were waking yes. up overnight and yes, they were noisy. They were very electric as well. There was a ton of lightning associated with them as well as some gusty winds. Now after that activity weekend, it eventually fizzled out last night. Yes, we had a nicer day. Most of us have been dry out there. It has been hot and humid though, especially this afternoon. But we're not finished with the storm chances right now across our region. We are still pretty quiet out there, but you can see over the mountains of Mexico. We already do have some strong thunderstorms that are getting going, and I do think over the next few hours, especially after dinner time, those will start to form into a complex could cross over the Rio Grande and then push into our far western county. So that's initially what we're going to be monitoring later this evening before another round is possible overnight. We'll keep it at a 40% potential for a few more widely scattered pop up showers and storms into the second half of the weekend before daily isolated chances take us into next week. So let's talk all about it, starting off with the setup across the Lone Star State. High pressure is off to our southeast, which means we have southeasterly winds in place here at the surface, pumping in more of that Gulf moisture. But meanwhile, there's a dry line out in far western Texas. When you combine those two things together, that's what's helping spark some of that storm activity, especially over northern Mexico. So later this evening after dinner time, it's possible we see those storms form into that complex cross over the Rio Grande later tonight and push through our far southwestern counties. After that and into the pre dawn hours of our Sunday, guidance shows that we could potentially see another complex of storms move through portions of the hill country and then approach the San Antonio area tomorrow morning by wake up time, but then start to fizzle out throughout the remainder of the morning hours. Then as we head into your Sunday afternoon, a few more isolated to widely separated showers and storms will be possible. It's not going to be for everybody, so don't cancel your plans. But if you are planning on heading outdoors, keep your eyes to the sky and of course keep your case at weather authority app handy. We'll keep eyes on it before just a few more isolated showers are possible late Sunday night. Generally, for the most part, it's looking like tomorrow Tomorrow night and early Monday could be a little bit quieter in terms of severe weather. Our risk is on the lower end of the spectrum here this evening, but with that first complex, especially across our far southwestern counties, we may need to monitor for a few isolated instances of some strong damaging wind gusts as well as heavy rainfall. And yes, some lightning also will monitor for some gusty winds if that second complex comes together early tomorrow morning. But yes, this all follows those noisy storms that we had in place last night. Here's a look at some of those area rainfall totals 0.56 in Pearsall 1.48 out in Brackettville, a little bit closer to San Antonio, just under half of an inch over at the airport, stretching over to Holotus as well as Kelly 0.52 over in Converse on the east side. So we'll see what we can find with the next few storm chances that are in the 
forecast. 87 right now. We're going to start off tomorrow morning in the upper 60s near about 70 degrees. Highs are going to head for about 90 yet again, especially for those that don't tap in, into any of the widely separated storms out there. And then as we head into next week, yes, we'll keep those isolated chances in the forecast. Temperatures just a few degrees below average because of that. And then warming things up into the low 90s as we head into next weekend, guys. Still those rain chances, though, so it's good because we still need it. I don't get concerned till we see 95. I don't see that on there. So we'll we'll Un keep rolling with unfazed, it. Unfazed, nice. unfazed. All right, Andrew, the Canyon girls playing for a state title in softball. That's right, and they came in undefeated thanks to a dramatic sixth inning victory yesterday. Mark Haley Maldonado hit the go-ahead RBI in dramatic fashion. Well, today they put it all on the line against the defending state champs. When we come back, we'll take you out to Austin for the highlights. Plus, Texas baseball teams cruise through the opening round of the college baseball tournament. Got that too next. Softball season all comes down to this. New Braunfels Canyon one win away from a perfect season and claiming the UIL Class 5A state title. Montgomery Lake Creek, the defending champs, stand in their way at Red and Charlene McCombs Field in Austin this afternoon. Pick this one up in the top of the first when Lake Creek strikes first. One on, Ava Brown puts a charge into the first pitch she sees, and that hits off the wall in left center. Maddox McKee scores, and it's 1-0 Lions right out of the gates. Bottom of the first now. Canyon has a chance to answer after a leadoff walk, but Markaley Maldonado can't get the bunt down. Brown snags it and fires to first for a double play. And after that, both pitchers settled in. Haley Carmona notched a pair of strikeouts in the top of the second for Canyon, but Brown was practically untouchable today. She goes the distance with a one hitter, striking out six batters in a row in the second and third innings. The Florida commit finishes with 15 Ks on the day. Cougarettes had no answer and they came up one win short of the title and a perfect season with an eight nothing loss. Obviously it was tough. She's she's awesome. She did a great job against us today. Um, obviously the best we faced all year. What's the biggest takeaway from a season like this? What are you going to remember most? Oh, wow. Just how amazing these kids are and um, how they worked together and they competed. Um, I mean, to get here, to get to this stage, it says a lot about this team and their character and um, and just how they, they work together with each other and, and they set goals and work their tails off to get here. Canyon finishes their season with a 32 and one overall record in high school baseball this afternoon. Bernie champion defeated Leander Rouse nine to four in the decisive game three, clinching the program's first berth at state. We'll show you those game winning plays tonight on the night beat. Also last night, Bernie fell to Sinton nine to nothing in game three of their class 4 a regional final, ending head coach Bill Merrill's remarkable career, a win short of state. That marks the deepest run for the playoffs, excuse me, playoff run for the Greyhounds since 2010. The final innings of game two of the class 6 a regional final series between Johnson and Westlake were crazy last night. Kaysen Cunningham gave the Jags a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the third with a solo homer to right, but Westlake rallied to force extras by tying the game at one in the top of the seventh. Then in the top of the eighth with a runner on second, Ty Shapiro drove a base hit into left. Theo Gillen hesitated rounding third, but the Jags throw home is cut off, and Gillen takes everyone by surprise by beating the second throw to the plate. That run gave the Chaps a 2-1 lead. They then led 3-1 in the bottom of the eighth, and Johnson had a runner on third with a tying run at the plate. This pop-up to right was caught by Braden Babb, who fired home to Ben Longoria for the inning-ending double play, and that's how Johnson lost 3-1 in extras. Jags coming up one round short of state. Texas-based college baseball teams qualified for the NCAA tournament this year, and all four won their first games of the regionals. That includes Texas A&M, who opened their tournament run with a 12-7 victory over Cal State Fullerton. The Aggies fell behind 3-0 in the top of the second before scoring 11 straight runs, starting with a five-run frame in the bottom of the second. Sometimes, hitting is just contagious. It's a good thing to see, you know, whenever goes, whenever guys go out there, you know, they give, they give everything they got, you know, they're, you know, if it's a strike, we're getting our swings off at the ball, we're laying off and we're passing the bat to the next guy. So it's just about, you know, getting our pitch to hit. If it's not, we're going to pass the bat and, you know, we're going to trust, we're going to trust that, that that guy can do the job. The Aggies play Stanford tonight at 8 p.m. Big 12 tournament champs TCU took on Arizona in their first game last night, and they also fell behind early 2 to nothing before rallying with six runs in the first two innings. 
Horn Frogs racked up 17 hits and cruised to a big win 12 to 4. Next up, TCU will face the hosts Arkansas tonight at 8 p.m. Meanwhile, the Longhorns and Red Raiders are both in action right now on the winner's side of their respective regional brackets. Texas is facing Miami, while Texas Tech is playing Florida. We'll have highlights from both of these games tonight on the Night Beat. Two of the best teams in the USL's Western Conference go head-to-head -head this evening at Toyota Field as San Antonio FC hosts San Diego Loyal SC. San Diego currently trails San Antonio by two points in the standings, and there's plenty of history between these two squads over the last year. Both clubs split their last two matchups with the home side winning in shutout fashion. It's a good thing, then, that reigning defensive player of the year, Mitchell Tainter, is back in the lineup from injury for San Antonio. How is he feeling now that he's getting minutes on the pitch again? I feel great. Um, you know, I took a lot of time just to, to rest and you know rehab my knee for that that six weeks. But uh, it was extremely frustrating. But it was probably good for me. You know, I'm a you know type A personality, very tightly wound. So I'm going, going, going. So it was pretty good to force me to relax a little bit. But I feel great. Body's feeling great. Mentally feeling really good. And I'm excited to get out there on, on Saturday night. Kickoff at Toyota Field is a little later tonight at 8 p.m. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Yesterday marks 10,000 days since the Dallas Cowboys last hosted the Lombardi Trophy. For the record, I was three years and seven months old. If they're going to get the job done this year, the offense is going to have to produce. With the departure of offensive coordinator Kellen Moore in the offseason, head coach Mike McCarthy has assumed play calling duties, and Brian Schottenheimer has been installed at OC. Of course, the verbiage is different this year, but has the offense itself changed any? No, not necessarily a big difference, but still the offense, still fast paced, still, you know, going to take our shots when we need to run the ball. Uh, I mean, overall, it's about, you know, finishing the end of games and um, being the best team of 2023. I checked, even if they win this year, it's 10,241 days okay. between titles. It's still a long time. Nobody's keeping score, though, right? Uh, I mean, someone is. Yeah. How From long? Football to football. <laughs> Andrew understood the assignment today. Thank you. you got it. We'll be right back. We'll let As we wrap up, Apple getting ready to reveal its most ambitious new hardware product next year or next week. On Monday, the uh, tech giant is expected to introduce mixed reality headset at its annual developer event. The headset will be capable of combining both virtual and augmented reality by overlaying virtual images over the real world video. But by buying the headset uh, could be expensive, Apple considering a $3,000 price tag for the start. I don't know those overlaying images giving me a headache or the $3,000 price tag. Is reality <laughs> real enough? I mean, come on. Just take a walk, everybody. Doesn't need to be augmented. Take a walk outside. Yep. All right, <laughs> let's get you one final look at those current conditions outside. We are in the upper 80s here in San Antonio. When you factor in the humidity, it is feeling a few degrees hotter than that. And later on this evening, while most of us will likely be quiet, especially closer to San Antonio, we are monitoring those storms over the mountains of Mexico that do look to track eastward here as we head into the evening hours and then into the overnight. Another round is possible closer to the hill country and closer to the San Antonio area. So definitely keep your KSAT weather app handy as we head into the next several days because with those daily isolated storm chances continuing, it's a little more of an active weather pattern heading into the upcoming week, guys. Well, we'll enjoy it as long as Mother Nature keeps the watering on for us. Yeah. The sprinklers. Get that mosquito spray ready, though. Yeah, they're, they're nasty. <laughs> we'll see you back here tonight for the night beat at 10. Until then, have a great evening.